All will be covered today in China Undercover. You find our information helpful. Please subscribe and turn on the notification. It will help us get more motivation to produce more quality videos. Now back to the news. On September 24th, a video was shared by a local resident, showing that heavy rainfall had caused landslides and collapses on some roads in Fengji County, Chongqing. On September 23rd, the Fengji County Transportation Bureau issued a notice stating that heavy rainfall had led to road closures at five locations on national and provincial roads within their jurisdiction. On the afternoon of July 8th, around 4 new zero p.m., a road surface collapse occurred near the Lion Fang Garden bus stop in Shapingba District, Chongqing. This incident resulted in a fully loaded truck carrying rocks and soil getting stuck in the sinkhole by the roadside. On July 9th, cover news reporters learned from the Municipal Department of Shapingba District that the collapse was caused by a malfunction in the underground drainage system. The affected bus stop was enclosed with barricades, and assessment and repair work is underway. Meanwhile, the bus routes that used to stop at this station have been redirected to the Gomiao Village North Station. In recent days, multiple areas in Aimen Fujian have experienced continuous heavy rainfall, resulting in a road collapse that trapped a person. The trapped man suffered injuries to his legs and waist, rendering him immobile. Firefighters descended into the pit, using safety ropes and their arm strength to lift the trapped individual, while coordinating with their team members to successfully rescue him. This is in Shangzi, Hong Kong, on 20th September, 2023. Heavy rainfall leads to multiple road collapses and traffic disruption, as we mentioned on a video before. The main issue here is the excessive extraction of groundwater. When we take out too much groundwater, it lowers the water table, which leads to the compression and thinning of the rock and soil layers beneath the surface. As a result, empty spaces can form underground, causing collapses, so in areas where the ground sinks at different rates. The surface and underground structures can tilt, crack, or become structurally unstable. Projects involving digging underground, like building subways or air raid shelters, can also cause the loss of soil and groundwater, making collapse incidents more likely. Furthermore, the over-extraction of groundwater is a big contributor to the broader problem of subsidence. Although it's not a major concern in large cities like Beijing and Shanghai, According to historical satellite images from the University of Colorado, Shanghai's ground level has sunk by 110 millimeters since 1965. In a city with over 16 million people, that's a three-meter drop in a century. Starting in 2003, the Shanghai Geological Survey Institute began monitoring how high-rise and multi-story buildings in the city were affected by sinking. Their observations show that Shanghai is sinking on average by 7 millimeters each year. This worrying trend has raised concerns among the city's tens of millions of residents, especially those living along the coast. In 2012, the Chinese government took notice. The consequences of this subtle yet profound subsidence are enormous. It includes the sinking of tall buildings, disruptions and failures in urban drainage systems, and reduced flood control capacity. Your uneven ground settling can lead to the sinking or cracking of building foundations, causing underground structures to lean towards water and oil wells, potentially resulting in fractures and destruction. Moreover, this phenomenon damages linear infrastructure projects such as railways, water and oil pipelines, bridges, and communication networks. Professor Long Di, an expert from the Department of Hydraulic Engineering at Tsinghua University, emphasized in a recent media interview that regions with excessive groundwater extraction face natural and life-threatening hazards. As groundwater levels continue to drop, the soil contracts, much like a squeezed sponge, leading to surface collapses and subsidence. This uneven subsidence can result in deformation, displacement, and even fractures in roads and bridges. Coastal areas may also experience seawater intrusion, causing severe damage to surrounding ecosystems. A research paper published in the Remote Sensing Journal in May of the previous year 
revealed the development of an extensive groundwater depression funnel in Beijing, contributing to widespread subsidence across the city. The study covered the period from April 2010 to December 2019 and identified significant deformation rates within the Beijing area, ranging from 117.4 to 5.1 millimeters per year. The Kaoying and Tongzhou districts were particularly affected and identified as primary areas of land subsidence. Over the past decade, Beijing has heavily relied on groundwater, accounting for approximately 37 to 65 of its total water supply. Changes in groundwater levels have played a pivotal role in land subsidence. Simultaneously, Beijing's subway network is grappling with deformations caused by subsidence. Among its 15 subway lines, six have exhibited average deformation rates exceeding 5 mm per year. The most significant average deformation rate was observed on the eastern segment of Line 1 Patong Line, registering 22.5 mm per year, with a peak deformation rate of 96.1 mm per year. Line 6 and Line 7 reported maximum deformation rates of 70.4 mm per year and 115.1 mm per year, respectively. After a comprehensive four-year investigation, another expert has issued a dire warning warning that if current trends continue, sea levels in the Yangtze River Delta region could rise by 400 to 700 millimeters by 2050, potentially leading to significant flooding. Chinese experts widely agree on the reasons behind Shanghai's sinking problem, including rapid urban growth, soft ground, and groundwater depletion. Chinese media has noted that Shanghai has been replenishing groundwater since 1996, though more is extracted in the summer and returned in the winter. In 2020, approximately 1.5 million cubic meters of groundwater were extracted, while a substantial 18.1 million cubic meters were replenished. Although the average annual ground sinking has decreased from 10.2 millimeters in 2002 to 5 millimeters, Shanghai is still experiencing subsidence. This issue isn't limited to Shanghai, as various parts of China have witnessed land sinking and ground collapses in recent years, resulting in tragic loss of lives and property. In one incident, a deep hole suddenly appeared in a plaza, swallowing and trapping 21 parked cars nearby. A crane was needed to rescue 15 of these cars. As the hole filled with water, a significant amount rushed out onto the street surface. In another instance, an intersection unexpectedly sank, forming a round hole, as outlined in Beijing's 14th Five-Year Plan for Geological Disaster Prevention and Control. By the conclusion of 2021, the subsidence of land in Beijing's flat regions exhibited two primary geographic patterns, north and south. In this area, the average annual subsidence rate measured 8.73 mm, most significant recorded subsidence rate reached 74.90 mm per year at the Jinzhen Subsidence Center located in the Kaoying District. Notably, a substantial region, covering 16 square kilometers, experienced significant subsidence with an annual rate exceeding 50 mm. Within this expanse, the most extensive cumulative subsidence, measuring 2.3 meters, was situated in the Jinzhan locality of Kaoyang. According to the Beijing Water Resources Bulletin of 2022, the average annual population in Beijing stood at 21.87 million, with each person having access to only 109 cubic meters of water. This falls significantly below the globally recognized critical water scarcity threshold of 500 cubic meters. Currently, Beijing's annual total water consumption nearly doubles the total available water resources, putting the city in a state of excessive groundwater usage. While the water shortage situation has somewhat improved with the initiation of the South to North Water Diversion Project, which began supplying water to Beijing in 2014, and the pace of groundwater level decline has slowed down, the city still grapples with issues of overextraction. The fundamental challenge of water shortage in Beijing remains unresolved. The water scarcity problem in Beijing can be attributed to two primary factors. Firstly, the rapid growth of the urban population has led to increased water demand for various purposes. Secondly, human activities, including the mismanagement of water resources by the Chinese Communist Party to in the Beijing region, have also played a role as the political epicenter of China.
Beijing has been the CCP's primary focus, resulting in the concentration of the country's most valuable social resources in the city. This focus has often meant that the interests of other provinces and cities have been overlooked in favor of supplying resources to Beijing. For instance, Beijing boasts advanced medical, educational, and infrastructure facilities compared to the national average. Many provincial and municipal government offices, as well as large state-owned and private enterprises, have established a presence in Beijing to enhance their connections with various government bodies. Beyond its political significance, Beijing is also an economic hub with a rich cultural and historical heritage. It offers greater development opportunities compared to other regions, attracting people from across the country in pursuit of success. This influx of people has led to a surge in Beijing's population, driving up housing demand and significantly increasing the value of Beijing's household registration, known as Huku. By the end of 2022, Beijing's permanent resident population had reached 21.84 million, marking a 53 increase over two decades. The population boom in Beijing has spurred a substantial demand for housing. To meet this demand, the city government has engaged in land sales and imposed various taxes and fees, resulting in significant financial burdens on the public. Land sales revenue consistently contributes around 40 of the city's total fiscal income between 2017 and 2021. Beijing's land sales generated a staggering 1.5 trillion yuan. Economist Ren Zeping conducted a study in 2020 on housing prices in major cities, including Beijing and Shanghai. The findings revealed that land costs and taxes constituted approximately 60 of the total housing price. This economic drive has led to the continuous expansion of Beijing's urban area, resulting in increased paved surfaces that reduce the capacity for rainwater absorption. Rapid population grows in 14. The groundwater level in the flat areas of Beijing dropped by nearly 11.5 meters. The area affected by excessive groundwater extraction covered 6,900 square kilometers at its peak, with severely over-extracted zones spanning 3,422 square kilometers. Water resources expert Wang Wilua explained that Beijing was once rich in water resources with numerous surface waters and rivers. China Daily has reported a concerning situation regarding groundwater in the North China region, which includes Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, Shaanxi, and Inner Mongolia. Groundwater overexploitation has reached a staggering 120 billion cubic meters, equivalent to the water volume of 200 Bohai Sea Lakes, the largest lake in Hebei province. Experts suggest that the actual situation might be even worse. With potential overdrafts approaching 200 billion cubic meters, this continuous drop in the water table has led to the creation of a funnel-shaped subsidence zone in North China, forming the world's largest underground water funnel network. Its extensive subsidence area poses a significant risk of land subsidence, affecting various regions, including Beijing. The Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences has published an article titled Uncovering the Past Life of the North China Plains Groundwater Funnels. The article reveals a more alarming situation. The North China Plain may have an extensive and intricate network of funnels underneath it, and the size of this network is expanding. In 2005, the total area of the shallow groundwater descending funnel was over 9,000 square kilometers. By 2019, it had grown to nearly 15,000 square kilometers, and in 2021, it expanded further to exceed 16,000 square kilometers. This expanding subsidence area includes Beijing, which sits atop this complex water funnel system. The article suggests that rather than attempting to conquer and alter nature, humans should focus on coexisting harmoniously with the natural environment. According to the notice, from the 23rd to the 24th, all bus and rural passenger vehicle services within the county were suspended urgently. The Transportation Department initiated emergency measures to restore traffic after the incident, and currently, some roads have been reopened. On the 25th, reporters learned from the Fengji County Transportation Bureau that no casualties have been reported but four road sections remain closed. He Ministry of Land and Resources of China reported that more than 50 other cities, in addition to Shanghai, were dealing with the threat of ground subsidence. This problem is particularly serious in places like Beijing, Tianjin, Hangzhou, and Exil.
Additionally, regions like the Yangtze River Delta, the Shaanxi Province Basin, and the North China Plain are facing similar challenges. In the same year, a significant step was taken when the State Council approved a plan to combat ground subsidence in Beijing. A sedan drove into the hole, unaware of the danger, and got stuck. Thankfully, there were survivors inside who urgently called for help, including dialing 110. Ground subsidence isn't limited to streets. It can even occur within homes. A shocking surveillance video captures a man sitting in a chair when suddenly the floor shakes and a sizable hole opens up. The man reacts quickly, stepping onto the edge of the hole and propelling himself backward to safety, narrowly avoiding a potentially tragic fall. Historically, Beijing heavily relied on groundwater as its primary water source, with more than half of its water supply sourced underground. Professor Lai Guiping, the vice dean of Peking University's School of Government, explained to KXN reporters that excessive groundwater extraction leads to a substantial drop in the groundwater level. Between 1999 and 2013, the average annual groundwater level in Beijing decreased by one meter. As the water level drops to a certain point, it triggers land subsidence. In the past, there was an intricate network of waterways connecting the inner and outer parts of Beijing. However, human activities, such as the construction of reservoirs and increased water surface areas, contributed to significant water evaporation. This, coupled with reduced inflow from upstream sources, has strained Beijing's water supply. And that is today's episode. If you found this video informative, please subscribe and ring a bell to get notification. Thank you for watching and see you next time.